Hey church, uh, welcome. Thanks for tuning in for this update. Uh, I'm Chris Ake, um, one of the board members joined in January this year, and I'm joined with Brad. Uh, and today I'm gonna give you a little bit of preview of what we're gonna talk about in this update. Um, we've got some recommendations and findings that we received uh, back in June, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that today. And also our 60th anniversary is coming up in September. Really uh, glad to talk about that and preview that in September. Uh, Brad, what else do we got to talk about? Yes, yeah, so we're gonna do a finance update like we do in all of these videos. Uh, we're going to share kind of where we're at with Big Creek as they've been transitioning from a campus to an independent church. Uh, we're also gonna hear from uh, Chris talking uh, about some stuff specific to our St. Charles campus as well. Awesome, thanks. Um, church, as we prepare our hearts to hear uh, this update, I just wanna thank you. Um, we love you so much and we thank you for joining us on this journey of healing and um, we are so excited to see what God has in store for our church and for our county and for uh, just the body of Christ. Would you join us in prayer and um, just be anticipating what God is going to do amongst us? Uh, thanks for tuning in to this update. Now, here is um, Brad and Dan and Chris. Well, hey church, uh, Dan, Chris, myself with you just to share a few updates uh, for this video. Um, firstly, back in uh, July, we had our all church meeting, July 17th. Nancy Moore from NL Moore was with us to share, discuss findings and recommendations coming uh, out of her study, her focus groups uh, and survey of our congregation during this time of transition. And we just wanted to elaborate on a couple of those. We wanna share kind of where we're at uh, in this process. And so, Dan, you want to just uh, start by kicking off um, the interim pastor. That was one of the yeah. recommendations that Nancy had for us. Like, what is that? I mean, you're our interim pastor. So like, <laughs> yeah. what, what is that? What does yeah. that mean? Well, I'm really grateful. Nancy has seen both the goods, good that's happening, but also room to get a few more things in order. And she's recommended that we bring a, a temporary uh, pastor, an interim pastor to work alongside uh, me and us to help do high level things, church polity, governance, things like that. And I'm really excited for this. I think it's a great call. Um, I'm also very excited to share that our board is diligently getting after it. And we have conversations started with a couple of interim agencies, mm -hmm. uh, as well as a couple of networking feelers out there. And so we're going to continue to process through what's available. And we're trusting that God will bring us not just uh, a person, but mm -hmm. the right person mm -hmm. uh, for the needs that we have. And I've got a, a, a lot of uh, expectation um, that this is going to progress in a really timely manner. Yeah, and the, the right person is probably more important than just a person. Oh my goodness, uh, yes. This. Um, one of the things, too, that was, was brought up was just some work with the board, and I think the interim might um, be a helpful resource, helpful person, uh, as our board seeks to um, have conversations about, like, well, what, is it, what does it look like for the board to relate to the staff and to the church and to lead and to shepherd and all those? Is there anything else that you wanted to share? No, I, I uh, think you've that? described it very well, other than I, I just really appreciate the humility um, of the men on our board, Chris, um, and the guys that he works with, and that they are comfortable having identified that there's room for growth and clearer understanding there. Um, and, uh, you know, trusting that, that both the wisdom of an interim coming in, mm -hmm. as well as that humility combined with our resources at the Central District, that will end the year in a much clearer place than yeah. we've begun. Yeah, that's great. Uh, one of the other things, a resource that keeps popping up in conversations and then um, with our time with Nancy was the book Peacemaker. Yeah. Uh, so conflict management, conflict resolution, how we do that as an organization. Uh, can you share about like, where are we at in that process? Yeah, uh, reading and studying the Peacemaker is, well, it's humbling, number mm -hmm. one. Uh, there's a lot of scripture and a lot of language of love uh, in real practical ways. Um, so our staff has begun studying this material through cohorts. Um, at the time of viewing, we'll have just gotten into our third week uh, of study. We've also in invited the church to read along. Mm -hmm. And I've been really encouraged by the number of people who have either picked up the book or uh, they went to, through library resources to get a hold of it and have begun to read it. I'm really excited to be sharing that John Richardson, who works at First Free here in the area, 
He has a lot of experience leading churches in the Peacemaker material, and he's going to be with Calvary at the Mid-Rivers campus on August 27th and 28th, uh, preaching in our services uh, around this topic and these concepts of peacemaking. Um, so that, I, you know, the goal of any church mm -hmm. is not to have zero conflict, mm -hmm. it's to have conflict well, mm -hmm. because that's what leads to peace. In fact, other talking heads say that conflict is needed if you're going to have trust. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I'm trusting that, that through this process and through this study that we all grow, uh, both the staff, our elders are reading this as well, uh, our congregation. Mm -hmm. um, seems highly engaged and ultimately uh, that we will become more of the kind of church uh, that, that is, um, represents Christ well with yeah. each other and in the world. That's great. Uh, there's one other recommendation that we wanted to highlight a little bit and it kind of at times maybe even got lost in the, just the vast information that was shared. Uh, but for our staff, um, this idea or this concept of right sizing, like what is that and what does it look like for us to start that process? Yeah, the concept of right sizing is, uh, you know, this idea that in every church you want to steward and deploy resources to maximum effectiveness. Now, every church context has a, a different formula or different ratio, but there's no doubt Calvary uh, on the whole has gone through many changes and not just in the last year, mm -hmm. but over uh, several years. And so I'm grateful that um, we're going to be stepping into those questions in the month of August and beginning to pull back, you know, the, the curtains or the lids or whatever mm -hmm. metaphor you want to use and, and working on right sizing, meaning rightly deploying our staff resources in particular for maximum ministry effectiveness. And with uh, that effort, Paul Bauman, our interim advisor from the EFCA Central District, he um, has volunteered uh, eagerly to be part of that, to help us in that. So uh, be praying for us uh, with wisdom. Uh, like we promised at the meeting, we won't do anything rashly or reactionary, mm -hmm. uh, but what we do wanna do is walk confidently uh, into a more clear future as Nancy's helped us understand uh, this is an important step toward cool. that. That's awesome. Um, this whole year has been one just filled with like cognitive dissonance for me, right? Like what are we... <laughs> good words, Brad. Uh, like there's lots of uh, stuff happening and yet there's also lots of good stuff happening. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that we want to highlight, talk about a little bit, is coming up. It's our 60th anniversary. We started talking about this back in January uh, but in September, we have something fun planned. So Chris, can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, so we have the 60th Annie coming up and it's gonna be an awesome celebration where on a Saturday, we get to kind of party together yeah. as a church and celebrate what God has done and how he's worked through Calvary Church for the last 60 years. Um, and then we'll get to kind of continue that into our Sunday worship service. Um, I think Dan, you've got the details for that because yep. it's gonna be here at the Mid Rivers campus. Yeah, we're gonna use uh, all the Calvary facilities. So on September 17th, the lower fields, uh, we've got part of the fields blocked off for inflatables for kids. We've got uh, games coming in for kids of all ages. We've got places to sit and to gather. Uh, we'll have a, a couple of food trucks on site for anyone who would like to pick up dinner while you're here. Uh, and that's optional. And then we'll also have Kona Ice uh, truck with us. And that's for kids of all ages as well. But we're picking up the tab on that one. And so anybody can uh, go get as many ices as they see fit. Um, in the evening, we're going to have worship uh, as the sun is going down. The party will start later in the afternoon. So it's kind of a come and do the yeah. whole thing together and it'll carry on uh, up until dark and it's gonna be a great time. And then worship on Sunday is going to be geared toward uh, this idea that God has allowed us 60 years of mm -hmm. stories of you know the love of Jesus and his grace working uh, in our community. And part of the, the focus is you know hoping and praying for 60 more. Um, and so I'm really excited. I, I continue to learn more of Calvary past, yeah. even as we walk into Calvary future. And that's a beautiful thing. This is a wonderful community. So it's going to be a great party. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. Um, as we've done in all of these update videos, we want to just update you on our finances, uh, where we're at this year, this summer. Um, summer is usually a downtime in our finances. We have a lot of expenses that go out because of awesome things like summer camp and VBS and mission trips. Uh, this year was no exception uh, to that. But where we are at this year, 
Um, we've had a number of staff members who have uh, offboarded over the last few months. And so we're getting to a place where um, we can better uh, anticipate what our expenses are going to be on a month to month basis. Uh, we're getting much healthier when it comes to a cash flow standpoint. Uh, we're also, I'm celebrating this that, you know, 2020 wasn't fun. The, uh, the pandemic wasn't fun, but one of the things that came out of it was, I think by the grace of God, um, some PPE loans that are allowing us to be in a, a, a better place financially, um, be prepared for this transition that we're in right now. Uh, we've had a number of new givers uh, over the past six months, which is really encouraging. Uh, and then our building, right? This is probably the first time ever, I think Dan, you've said this, that um, a church has painted its building and uh, everybody is like thrilled with it because of everything else that's going on, but also because it looks incredible uh, at our Mid Rivers campus. And uh, the company we've been working with uh, have been an incredible partner. Um, they did the work in a timely manner and they came in under, uh, under budget, which we really appreciate. And so we're thanking, uh, thanking God just for his provision uh, through that. And then lastly, in our, our, our video we did last, uh, last time, we shared that um, eligible full-time employees, uh, one of the benefits that uh, we receive as part of our salary is a car allowance, and we have temporarily uh, suspended that. That still is suspended, so I am just grateful to work with a team uh, that is all in, that is bought in. Um, it's not an easy thing to have to take a pay cut, but we have a team that's committed, um, that is committed to the mission and that is committed to our church. And so um, we're still just thanking, uh, thanking God for our staff uh, in this season. And in the middle of that, we're thanking God for the stewardship of the church itself. Uh, it really is remarkable to see um, the amount of resources that, that the church willingly, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if this is a great metaphor, but puts on the table mm -hmm. for the work of the kingdom in our area and for our piece of that work. So church, thank you. Thank you for your continued partnership. Uh, thank you for your, uh, at times, sacrificial giving, your generous giving, um, and your continued giving. It is making a difference, not only uh, in this time, but it will bear fr fruit far into the future. Yeah, that's great. Uh, the last update we have has to do with um, a couple of our campuses. So St. Yeah. Charles campus, Chris, you got something cooking. Yeah, so um, as many of us know, like in the NL More findings and recommendations, uh, St. Charles Campus was a part of those findings and recommendations. Um, and it was suggested that as a leadership team and as a church, we find clarity mm -hmm. on what are the next steps for the St. Charles Campus. And so uh, starting in early June, our elder board, along with our St. Charles team and our core leaders at St. Charles Campus, which is a mixture of lay leaders and staff, um, started to pray and fast about what might it look like for us to gain clarity on our relationship with Mid Rivers Campus mm -hmm. and as an organization as a whole. So now we're kind of entering this season and we're entering this process of evaluating, should we remain a multi-site church mm -hmm. or should we as the St. Charles Campus uh, become a church plant with continued partnerships with Mid Rivers Campus like going on into the future. Uh, so this wouldn't be a, uh, we're moving out of the house, we don't like you guys anymore yeah. kind of thing. Um, there would still be, even if there was a church plant, uh, tons of opportunity for yeah. partnership and relationship. But right now we're just kind of entering the season of discernment of is, is multi-site or a church plant the best for the health and the vitality and the mission of, of St. Charles Campus going forward. Yeah. So we want to invite you and invite everyone on staff, elder board, members to be praying and fasting with us in this so that we'd have the right wisdom and discernment going forward. Yeah, yeah, it's a great conversation, right? How do we expand God's mission faithfully in our county? And yeah. one of the other updates we want to share is uh, a couple of years ago, uh, Gary Gann, Pastor Gary Gann from our Big Creek campus approached leadership uh, with this question of what would it look like for Big Creek to do something similar. And um, kind of again, in the midst of everything, like. Uh, we want to just share with you where we're at with that. As of June 1st, Big Creek is its own independent church. They are um, still in the same denomination. They're partners within the EFCA Central District, um, but we're just celebrating that. They are uh, leasing the building uh, from us, uh, from uh, Calvary um, as well. And uh, yeah, we're continuing to partner uh, together to see God's mission uh, expand contextually uh, in different areas in our county. 
Church, so there's lots going on. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's part of why we want to bring these video updates to you regularly, in addition to new ways we're learning to communicate, like the recent churchwide meeting. Uh, most of all, we want you to know, as Chris Ake said earlier, we love you. We are so grateful uh, to be part of the work of, of God in you. And um, as, yeah, as we continue to work through many key uh, key things that seem to have fallen onto our plate this year. We're trusting uh, not only God's presence in that, but His wisdom, His direction, and that only comes through clearly as we're all praying together, uh, being peaceful with each other, loving each other, and worshiping Jesus together. So to that end, I can't wait to get together this coming Sunday and praise Jesus with you.